sure it'll be great. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to do what I- All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mute everybody then ask Sandy to unmute, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. And, uh, yeah, now I'm gonna go on to my PowerPoint. Um, oh no, I, that's not how I do it. I have to go to share screen, then I have to choose that. Remember the alt tab? I just used my mouse and I got there. Excellent. Okay, and... Rock and roll. There, hi. We're gonna to talk today. So you don't see my face. Oh, you do. Do you see my face too? It's not recording your face. It's recording. Oh, good. Okay, good. Anyway, um, the, uh, the talk is about minimalism. And here is a photo which came along with the template, which was perfect. I love the simplicity of this and uh, the leading staircase. And a lot of photographers have whole uh, galleries of stairs. And uh, I found it interesting so I left it in to uh, show and uh, the, the uh, minimalism started in the late 1960s in America and um, they wanted um, artists wanted to have um, inspire the audience to appreciate the finer details of the materials used in their work. Originally minimalism started in uh, with work in sculpting moving again then to architecture, interior design, and photography. I personally am not a minimalist. In my life, in my, in, my, in my work, in my creative paths, I tend to struggle with isolating and getting, going from the big picture to the small picture. I don't know if anybody else has it, but in minimalist, minimalism, uh, you have to provoke an emotional response or provide a unique visual experience. And the elements must be kept to a minimum. And we'll be showing different uh, levels of minimalism. And you have to really train your eye to be simple, to minimize the expansive vistas. And I really have trouble with that when I do painting in, out in, in plein air or if I'm taking photographs in the mountains, I tend to take the broader view. And sometimes that broader view is not the best. So we'll see how it it goes um, in some of the samples that I show. The next thing I'm gonna show is Michael Kenna's name came up in quite a few of the articles that I was reading as a minimalist. So we're gonna to go to the YouTube as a short video about five minutes about Michael. So Mark, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so when I click on this and go to that, I click on this, I have to click on um, link. his link here. Um, will be on the handout that I'll send to Mario to put on online. And it's best if I don't show some of those pictures right now because I'll probably screw it up. Um, if anything, I'll do one at the end, okay? Um, I guess so. Uh, color, one of the main elements of design and art. And we can use color in many different ways to add meaning and depth. Uh, bold colors will allow the colors to take over Pastel colors, soft, minimal shadows, and low contrasts can be used indoors or out. And portraits especially do well uh, with pastel colors. Um, monochromatic colors, which I tend to like. I like black and white. You can use uh, the um, vintage look of the sepia. Add drama, sets the mood, and can add a vintage touch highlighting a, a colored subject. I'll be showing some examples of some of these. Highlighting a colored subject, placing the colored object against a neutral colored background to make that, that, that object pop, a bright yellow or bright red. Using different color temperatures to change the mood. Cool will be blue, warm would be orange, and you can do it either in camera with your white balance, either on purpose or making a mistake, sometimes doing it against the what, the, what you would say, instead of using cloudy, say, you may want to use tungsten or another um, white balance and it'll give you a different effect. But you can also do it in processing, but usually it works best with raw data. So if anybody is shooting in JPEG, this wouldn't work as well. And colors can also evoke emotions. Red, anger, dark blue can mean it's ominous or mysterious. So on the left, 
is a scene, a Shutterfly photo from the article that I'm citing from, which is quoted, you know, which is listed here. And that red of the candles and the berries and the, and the plate on the black really make that image pop and it really gives you a sense of Christmas and, and warmth. And using complementary colors. Most of the pictures are mine. I will tell you when they're not mine. So I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm posting, excuse me, only mine or that I, I give credit to those who uh, photos I have used. And in using a complement complementary colors here, this would be um, orange and blue. You set a mood. You said uh, this is just a quick shot that I took on the way home from Colorado from the moving car because that was the best. That was the only time that I was up early enough to get a sunrise. So um, this particular photo is from uh, Chris Lord that led a photo group um, with us once out to Staten Island to the fort. And he has a Facebook page and, and he's also on Instagram and he was kind enough to let me use this photo. And it tells a story. And I like what I liked about it was the bold and complementary colors and the geometric lines, sort of like why is that staircase leading, how did that staircase is leading up to that bottle, which you may not have noticed? And why is that bottle there? And who put it there? But what he wrote was, where do they lead? Will you follow me upstairs, downstairs in my lady's chamber, dark places, happy places. I do promise this, you will never find a stairway to, the myth, to a mythological heaven. And he has a whole series of staircases and he's traveled a lot and if you travel a lot, you can get a lot of great shots. I don't travel a lot, but this one is in, from Cuba. Based on basing your photography on simplicity, and you have to sometimes think outside the box. Um, using geometric patterns and lines, using one color to make it pop. In this particular case, it was a, a sepia reddish tone brick that I took a photo. I don't know what wall, but it had a reddish tone. So I used some black and white and some filters to just blacken it, but keep that red in for a highlight. Um, it also has contrast and uh, texture. And often it's good to use light to help improve your texture and to bring out the colors. And again, I quoted the article where this came. Again, using open space is another concept of uh, minimalism, using uh, foreground, middle or background and isolating your subject is often very, um, typical of minimalism. It's often not easy if you're out and about to get that perfect picture as we all know, especially if you're in a moving car. So um, if you're in this, as our life is so crowded, I know mine is, um, it's natural that we sometimes need to help rest our eyes on a particular place and let our souls rest on it. And in that video, and that's what Michael Kennett does and he talks about he does all of most of his work is in black and white and he likes to photograph alone early in the morning late at night he does travel extensively um i know we all go out in groups but sometimes some of us go off on our own and sometimes that's peaceful sometimes you get inspiration from others but sometimes being by yourself is like relaxing peaceful and you can really just concentrate on what you want to take photo of and it's a way to escape the clutter of your life. And um, when I was preparing for this, I looking around at my office and my upstairs, I says, I better clean everything up because it got me all cluttered and make me feel very tense. So um, in this particular photo on the left, the leading lines, um, they can be horizontal, they can be vertical or diagonal, but it helps lead the viewer's eye to your subject. And in this particular case, if that truck um, had been in the left lane and no other trucks. That may have been enough for the photo not to have to crop it. I mean, it's best to crop, you know, in camera. Sometimes you can, sometimes you don't see the scene when you're out and shooting. And even the color is simple. It's yellow on blue is that complementary colors that, that, that is good as part of minimalism. But I chose to simplify it. Um, I cut out the road and I just left the lines and the vertical and the horizontal and the diagonal and uh, left out, made the um, monochrome, setting a mood, um, feeling a little bit of sense of, of doom or mystery. And you keep out 
distracting and unnecessary details out of the photo. I concentrated mostly on landscape, most not be, not in any particular for any particular reason. And there are lots of of uh, types of um, minimalism. You can do minimalism for food photography, uh, portrait photography, uh, architecture. It just so happens I started my research looking, and I happen to take more a lot more landscapes because of my you know like in Colorado that's where I usually um, like to shoot. Uh, I think with this in mind, I try to do some more minimalist um, shoots in Florida, um, in Florida, in, in Colorado, you know, trying to uh, hone in on a smaller object. And even on when we took the walk to the graveyard, you can really get a massive amount of information in their photo in that graveyard, right? And, but I chose to look at things more minimalist, going in closer, maybe, and I've seen some others who send me their photos just looking at um, sections of a car or sections of a part of a yard so you don't have so much information in one photo. And what equipment do you need to be a minimalist photographer? Less is more is one of the words, but it's really, that's sort of like a loose term. You can't always say less is more. Um, a smartphone can work, point and shoot, even though my, my um, the guy from the photography store said that points and shoots are no longer being made. And it, since you have an eye, most, most of us have iPhones and their, and their uh, photographing abilities are getting more and more sophisticated. Those often work very well. Use of depth of field and bokeh is not necessary for minimalist photographers, but sometimes it works to your advantage. DSLRs or mirrorless and wide angle and long, long focal lens lenses. And we'll look at some of these in more um, concentrated look. <clears throat> we'll talk about lens with long focal lens and wide angles. Some examples will follow. Um, when you have a striking focus point to draw your viewer's attention as in a still light, you wanna look at a still light from a minimalist point of view. And I have some examples of that. You wanna to stick to fewer colors and to increase the minimalist feel of your images and also shooting in black and white. As I said, uh, Michael Kenna is a, um, does all his work in black and white. You can focus on silhouettes. And I know uh, Mario does a lot of silhouettes. I can't remember anybody in particular, um, others that have had done silhouettes, but that works very well. And using long exposures and, <sighs> Unfortunately, I'm not showing that, but what Michael does is goes out early at night or early in the morning or late at night, and he has long exposures to any demonstrates. And you've seen this, the star trails or the moon shots where you start and you see the moon rising and it leaves a long um, trail. And another one that is a good trick, uh, using longer exposures, if you're in a busy area with a lot of people, a longer exposure will often blur the people in the background. So you may, it'll reduce the amount of elements in your photo. What's the best time of day? Not always possible when you're on a travel trip with a group of people when they say, we're stopping off at this place and you have 15 minutes to look at, you know, take photos, you know, and you have a group of people, like thousands of people looking at the same thing. But often early in the morning, late at night, also going to, Coastal areas, desert, mountains, these are all great places for um, shooting. And even when you go across the street to the um, day farm, I'm sure there are plenty of places. I haven't been there yet, but I've seen others photographed where you can get those type of shots. And you want to keep the, your cropping tighter and best to crop it in camera. And your focal point should not dominate the frame. You want it to, you want, and you want to strip down the essentials. What do I mean by your focal point should not dominate the frame? Again, that's a statement, but then they show, you see a picture of a flower and rather than focusing on the, uh, the larger picture of the whole flower, you go on macro into a center part of the flower and it fills the frame. So it depends on what subject matter that you're looking at. <clears throat> Here's a wide angle um, lens that I use uh, 20 millimeters at F50. Of F13. And uh, I know I showed this for the contest that we were, you know, for the uh, inter community contest. And I really felt that the smoke filling the mountain skies 
um, because there was so much smoke from the fires out west and it really it changed the feel of the mountains. It was distressing, it was gloomy, it was moody. But one day I was looking at it and I said, wow, you know, there's just there's so much drama and I love the way the mountains looked with the, um, <clears throat> with the you know, the, the mountains just going off into the distance. Uh, normally I would shoot on a great blue sky over the Rockies and I wouldn't have taken this photo, but that's, it was just something about the picture. And I know some of the comments said there's too much negative space. And again, if you like minimalism, that's one of the um, things that you have to consider using is minimal is uh, negative space. Silhouettes. Again, some of the tricks to using this is setting your exposure value as zero against the sky to ensure that your elements in the foreground become silhouettes against the sky. And ma make sure you're photographing at an angle. You want the whole object silhouetted against the sky. So you may be bending forward, bending down and looking up or looking up, you know, standing up and looking down. But in these examples that I show, which are not mine, which I really love these pictures. Uh, <clears throat> these were from uh, Raw Pixel, which is free access to anybody. So um, that's why I chose these. Um, I love the soldiers on the mountain with the orange background. And the, the person on the right, it sets a mood of loneliness or contemplation. It depends on how you look at it, but it's warm. The yellow colors are, gives a sense of warmth. And I'd like you to think about this for a minute. Maybe after we talk, I'd like to input on these, some of these photos. I chose to um, feature my uh, landscape silhouette that I found in my archives and of uh, the trees and just a large span of sky and um, it was a wide angle and it shows textures, it shows lines and com complementary colors of, um, well, it's yellow or orange against the blue. Using a, for, um, a long focal length, this one was shot at 300 millimeters and I think you all know where I took this one, uh, at F11 at a crowded location. So. Sometimes you're in a crowded location and you really want to zoom, get close to the subject, but you can't. But if you have a zoom lens, you can zoom in and you just need the um, subject to tell the essence of the story. And here I felt it was freedom, strength, and welcome to all that arrive. And your use of negative space is important. And I would say if looking at it, perhaps maybe too much centered, but in this particular photo, I think it works. And in terms of what a long focal length does, it compresses your scene. And you can create focal with a large aperture, but F11 is not really a large aperture, but I wanted to get as much in focus as possible at being such a long distance from the hand. Um, but it is a smooth focal, gives a strong subject, um, with a strong subject will give a good photograph. So, I hope you all agree that this is an example. I just went through my archives to find the best examples that I could. Again, best locations. Where do you go to take a great a photo? Usually a lot of these destination places have tons and tons of people and you wanna take a photograph uh, that means something. So identify what you wanna photograph. And if you can't isolate, find another way to do it. That's why a, a zoom lens works best and you want your eyes to rest somewhere. And the way I think I uh, edited this a while ago, I think um, sets the mood of um, a dark and mysterious. We're using the dark blue, which tends to make um, a scene more mysterious and foreboding. <clears throat> you wanna tell a story. I know a lot of photographers, well, I, when I read a, a story from a photographer or I read, um, an article, they say why they did grow, why this painting meant so much, what they saw in the painting, or why they chose to do this painting like that. I'm a little bit not as deep in, um, in terms of my own thought processes when I do it. And it made me stop to think that maybe I need to look more at, at something. Why am I taking this picture? What does it mean to me? You wanna strip the scene down to its barest essentials so that your viewer I will rest on something and feel comfortable resting there. And it's good to use, and you can use it in documentary as well as street photography. 
So what do you do when you're in a crowded location and you have a great scene? Here on the left, um, so the best way to get your minimalism is in camera, but it's not always possible. So I saw this picture, I said, well, it, has a, it was a long zoom. It has a lot of negative space, but there's so many people here. This is really not a sample of minimalism on the left. It's an interesting picture, but it's nothing special. So I obviously cloned not only out some strangers, but I cloned out my friend in, in the yellow raincoat on the left, on the right, on the left picture. But I left a few people that I knew if I cloned them out, it would, it, it just wouldn't work with, with the, um, you know, looking natural. So I left a few, and I think, I think it does the, has that effect of minimalism. I black, did black and white. I did a lot of um, a cloning, um, no, not um, uh, burning to get the, um, you know, in the, in the rocks and get that and in, in the distant uh, mountains um, to get the effect. And I like the way the peaks stand out. And I really do like the few people there. I don't know if it would have been better with like the threesome only or, or one person. And I try to keep as, uh, like an uneven number. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I, le I left eight people because I, th I thought taking out another person would have ruined the photo. Uh, again, keeping this, the um, image simple. Um, I saw an example of something like this in what I was reading. Um, he showed, they showed a picture of a boat on empty, just lots of spans of water, but they, and there was something else and they cloned out the rock. I left my rock in, I didn't know. I just sort of felt that it, it fit the picture. There's a lot of negative space. Um, it's black and white. Um, it's moody, you have mist in the background. And that's another feature that uh, Michael Kenner uses is uh, mist, he, he likes to shoot. Um, and I know we all love to do this, um, go out in the rain, the snow and the cold to get photographs. But um, in this particular case, I think I was, um, it was ice, I think it was Iceland and I was on a boat dressed in very warm gear. I showed this picture again last week. Um, you wanna compose something without extra elements. Here is the photograph as I took it. And why I took this photograph is just, I looked at the dandelion and I just love the design in the dandelion. But I didn't think while I was there to get in closer and to isolate what I really saw. And um, there's um, something on the bottom right, you know, uh, part of the dandelion um, dead, uh, I think, you know, areas that were dead that is in the photo. There's a lot of white in the background. And uh, I realized that you needed to get in closer to really get the essence of what I saw. And, perhaps, and the best would have been on the site. So what I did on the left is I zoomed in on the center part and I did some highlighting with the colors to get that design that I really liked. liked. And I then I turned it into black and white and the left one on uh, the one to the, uh, left of the black and white, I used some filters to get that blurry effect. And I know the comment from the judge was that there's too much blur on the peripheral um, area of my flowers in black and white, but I sort of like it. Um, perhaps if I um, cropped this picture a little differently, I could have just get, gotten in and added black background to get that effect that he was talking about. Again, here's another one that you can do post-processing. Like I said, it doesn't have to be in the camera. The best place to do is your minimalism is in the camera. It's you, you're seeing something, you want to isolate that subject, but if you can't do it, you, you can do it um, in camera. And the photo on the left is almost from the camera, but I did blur the background out. The, the background wasn't as blurry. And then I darkened the black red background. And I says, you know, what happens if I zoom in, which is what I got to on the right. And I still have to do some editing as suggested by uh, I think Dan to get some of the black spots out if I'm going to enter it anywhere. But I really like um, how this photo it reminds me, um, I forgot the name of the uh, artist or photographer. And somebody will remind me if somebody wants to unmute themselves and let me know. Oh, her name is coming to me. I can't think. Anybody remember who know who I'm talking about? an abstract artist. She does close-ups of flowers. Okay, in camera, 
finding a subject that you like a lot. I mean, I saw this car, you know, but again, you have a busy street, you have all that foliage. And I did crop and take this photo on the right, but I cropped a little bit more um, in camera to get closer look at the lines of, of the um, back window and the shine and, and the lines and texture in the, in the gold. It was a very interesting car. For me, I think this is minimalism as I get to the, you know, to the center and the right. I started off, this was um, in Iceland, I believe. And I like the photo and there's some, I like the, the lines of the contrasting um, building with the, with the tower, but then is that really not, that's not really what they say as minimalism, it, or not strictly minimalism. So I went and I took, I did take the center photograph um, and it from a different angle and um, <clears throat> the architecture, the horizontal lines, the, um, this contrast of the red against the blue, um, I thought, and the, and the negative space really fell in with that concept of minimalism. But then I did, and another area that they talk about is doing some, you can do some um, filters to use and make it more dramatic. And I used a neon filter for this in Photoshop. So I thought it was interesting. So I thought I add it. You wanna simplify and tell a story. Um, the one on the left, I won. A, I did win an award with here um, early in my first years in the photo club. And rather than take a picture of that of that whole barn door, I remember looking down and down from up down to get those lines merging down to the bottom, and the rusty nail. And your eye sort of follows. And I think the way the nail and the shadow work well in with the concept of minimalism. The one to write is just a fun shot that I chose to look at. We were walking on one of our um, walks and I stopped to Florida, I believe. And, um, you know, and I just like the way the birds were perched. It's not a great photograph. It was done with an iPhone and I didn't stop and make sure that it was totally in focus. But the idea of the birds sitting on the line and then I had, saw the red roof in there and I said, well, that's cute. The, um, it's telling a story. These birds are waiting to get into the red roof in or, you know, stay overnight. So I sort of like that story. You want to simplify and show how you fail. I don't know if anybody has been to the Tetons, but or any area that's grand, the Grand Canyon, you stand somewhere and you go, oh my God, you know, you look at that area and you want to go, it's like awesome. And the left one, I know I did, and I did win an, um, one, one award. I think it's hanging still at um, in physical therapy which we do have to change up. So I'm gonna need people to submit some photographs um, in about three weeks. And then I decided to play around with it for this, um, for this lecture. Uh, I made it into a black and white. And I felt that it has a different drama than the blue. I, I just, I like the way it looks. I get, I don't know if it, if anybody falls in line with Michael Kennedy's um, types of photography or, the Ansel Adams of black and whites, but I really like the way it looks. You wanna isolate your subject. Now again, is my be totally in focus? Probably not. I probably have a little bit too much brightness in the background, but getting that be on the flower tells a story. And um, I got into drawing bees this summer, but I didn't take too many photographs of bees this summer. This was from a few summers ago. And on the right, I had taken some photographs of my husband's um, guitars. He has a huge collection. And most of the photographs are, are uh, of the whole guitar, the front or the back. But this one in particular, I like the, the um, I don't know what part of the guitar that's called. I should know this since he, he's an um, avid guitar uh, player and collector. But the horse and uh, the unicorn um, on this area and the, and the lines of the gold, where the tuning tuning uh, knobs are, I really like. And I it tells a story, it's a guitar, you know it's a guitar. Uh, oh, my thing froze. Oh, hold on, okay, coming back. You wanna draw the viewer's attention. Um, I, the magic of nature, I call this one on the left and how the sun was just coming right through the clouds. 
over the mountains and uh, and above the cloud the, the opening above the cloud had a lot of drama and uh, I changed it into a black and white to give it more mood and more drama and the orchid on the right was not originally a black and white um, it, although it is a white orchid it was still like it had highlights of uh, yellow in it and it just was mm, nothing special but I turned it into the black and white and what they talk about when you convert something to black and white, it often, especially on a close up, it emphasizes the texture and lines in the subject that you're working with. Here I have another sample, which I did listen to some of the comments that people had when I, I submitted it this last time at the contest to um, reduce the negative space because I really had a lot more negative space. And the subject um, that I chose on this was about talking about contrast, black and white, dark and light, to, to set the mood for minimalism. And uh, I did reduce it to give it um, less of an overbearing of the white um, ocean and to highlight the two, um, I changed the name of the uh, photo too. I changed it to necking on the rocks, but um, I really liked the way it, 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 it zoomed in on the subject and, it kept the viewer's eye directly on the subject, the place to rest the eye. And um, the ocean on the right, I think is still the Atlantic Ocean, but it wasn't Iceland. It's dark, it's gloomy, it's stormy, it's agitated. And in the black and white, it gives it more of that look. Another one that tells the story here again on the left, um, reducing, using negative space, but I took it out from the center, which it was originally, and I moved it over, you know, I cut off some from the right to get the viewer's eye to rest on the bird, looking out into the distance, and you see some bulk of the sky, which gives it some interest, and the water drops coming off of the fountain. It really does look like an ice cream cone that's melting. And the one on the right was, um, an area of a fence. I don't. I know. I, I remember taking this, but I don't remember which fence this was. With the water drop just dripping off of it, and uh, just letting, and the, you can see the reflection in the water drop. This one on the left is not mine. It's courtesy of um, this guy Christian, who is a Facebook friend who does a lot of nice photography. He actually sent me two that I could use, but I chose to use this one. I really saw it on. I saw it on Instagram, and I liked it immediately. It reminds me of Bobby's photographs really something she would do. Um, the light, um, the black background, the book, it tells a story. It's really a very comfortable. And I don't, I don't see his, his title was Autumn Time for a Book. I didn't like his title so much. I see more of, uh, I just, it just, uh, you know, it, the time for a book, Autumn, it, autumn, it doesn't speak autumn to me, but I really love the way the photograph looks. And my breakfast photograph on the right, again, it's a, it's a subjects that you can find in your home around where you are. You can find, go out in the yard and do a, photo, a minimalist photography. You can go anywhere we go and I need a photograph, photograph, uh, photographic trips and you can do a minimalist photography. And I know everybody here has done some samples of it somewhere. Uh, should I try this one? <laughs> this, this is- You wanna be, give it a shot. Yeah, but this would be my next to the last. I just want to say this. Um, I, I did a little playing around. Somebody mentioned they liked my hit my face in the uh, my hand, and so I put my face in the hand. I don't know if you can see it there, and I did some editing just to. Uh, this is really just to to end the thing. I just want everybody to watch this. If you're gonna if you're gonna uh, participate, I don't. What's the date that of the um, mark? Do you remember the date for the uh, when we we submitting photos to show minimalism samples of I sorry <laughs> I know it's somewhere in the calendar I have to check my calendar so let me yeah but this particular go. this particular video you should all watch is I didn't choose to put it in here because it's a 30 minutes um it's by Judy 28th October 28th. Okay. well we're going to have the presentation on the 28th so that's probably going to be uh Sunday the 24th so the 24th is the cutoff date Right. So this particular video is very good because she, Judy Holland, um, uh, the link will be in the handout as well. And she is uh, also talks about Michael Kennedy. A lot of her work is stunning and I think you will enjoy it. But 
the um, and her her explanations of how and why she does the photographs. So I no, so what I have to do here, Mark, if I want to go to this video. Hi. If you want, I can go back to the first video if you want, because we still have some time. I mean, it's five minutes now that I know what to do. Do you want or yes, no? Oh, why don't we ask Flo? Flo, where's Flo? I'm right here. I mean, it's all right with me because it's only 20 after eight. You're right, I talk fast. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> All right, let me. Uh... So any questions, comments, thoughts? I think you did a fantastic job. I was a little yeah. quick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could all unmute now so we can chit chat. Right. Yeah, I, I, it was absolutely impressive, uh, Sandy. It was lovely. Uh, I, I found that my impression of what I thought minimalism was, uh, it actually, uh, unless I'm mistaken, uh, uh, was a very narrow impression. Other, you know, there were other shots there that I would never think of that was minimalism. But obviously, since you're showing it, I suspect that they are, correct? But are you talking about mine or, or Michael's? Oh, or well, Actually, some of yours, some of Michael's, some of the other gal. Yeah. Uh, you know. Well, when she shows, talks, when the woman, when she talks, she, in the video I want you to watch, she explains, like, why does she take the pictures of the hands as opposed to the picture of the woman? She showed a picture of a woman standing in, an, in a home with a crossover. And she says, although this is impactful, and then he, she showed a picture of just the hands, this tells a better story of that woman. Even, no, even, no. even, even the one where you had the baby that was cut off, you saw her hold a woman holding a baby in her arms. Mm -hmm. The baby, I realized it while I'm watching it that oh the baby's cut off, but it's it's that interaction, the hands, the emotion that it brings that yeah. I think that's where it it I mean it's very similar to when you discuss macro photography. I was I read through your um, because I didn't attend. I watched your video, you know, the video of you talking, and what's considered a macro is sometimes can be considered minimalism. You know, again. Yeah. You know, so, which ones in particular, Flo, that you may not have thought would fit in? Well, I guess it with the in the woman's video, um, she had a couple of shots of two women, just the two women. Now, I would never consider that as a minimalistic type shot. The first yeah. guy, most of his is what in my, you know, what I would. Yeah. I thought of yeah. when I thought of minimalism. Well, she does say in her videos that this was just, you know, it di didn't say minimalism, it just said grandmothers. So it wasn't necessarily all the photos may not have fit into that category. Oh, okay. yeah. Because in, in her video, she talks, um, you know, the woman herself, I could say that was more of a minimalist because everything else was, you know, there was some empty space, there was nobody else there. Um, but the women, two women together may not have been, she says she tends to be shoot in a minimalist style, right? So not necessarily every one in that particular video was, was you're accurate. Okay, it was, it was a lovely presentation. And I suppose yeah. you can put those other uh, websites on the, uh, you know, the other YouTube. On the right, right. I, I have a, a list of the places, things I read and, you know, the articles that I quoted from. And there's some, you know, photos in those particular um, links that will. Yeah. And watching the photo, looking at different photos makes you understand what it is that minimal and minimalism. Minimalism. <laughs> is uh, it gives you a better understanding of what it is just so everybody knows the show and tell is on um the 28th and i think the cutoff let me just make sure i i did look is it, it up. mark said the 24th yeah uh, i think the um the show and tell is on the 28th i think what he might mark if, Four days. if i'm wrong yeah. The, uh, the 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 um, the date to get your pictures in will be the twenty fourth. Is that correct? Sounds right. Yeah. 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 It's October twenty eighth. 
is when the show and tell is. Yeah. Well, one, one other observation. If you're using this, these photos for a competition, almost all of our judges are obsessed with tight cropping. Um, sometimes you can give a, a minimalist picture a title that uh, sort of negates that comment. I had one a couple months ago. Uh, it was sunflowers uh, against the blue sky mm -hmm. background. And there was a lot of sky. And I entitled it yeah. Reaching for the Sky. And the judge actually got the title. And his first comment would be, oh, cut off all that sky. But then, you know, <laughs> so, you know, think about, yeah. think about, right. think about your titles, particularly knowing that uh, it's going to be comments about cropping. Uh, but the I know. Is, yeah, maybe that's what should be, if we're doing a minimalist, maybe that should be a topic for a contest. Yeah, good be. Yeah. In the open. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah it certainly yeah. could be with, you know, we'll think about that for next year. Yeah. yeah. I think I put that down as one of my my. You four. did actually. So did I. <laughs> okay. Anybody this else? Very, this is very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Claude. Thank you. I take that for a high compliment, Claude, since you're the mm -hmm. uh, guru of giving uh, <laughs> talks here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anybody else? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you.